Welcome to this special edition of Connections. Earlier today, Armenian authorities reported the arrival of some 65,000 refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh into Armenia. The crisis, the humanitarian crisis which has emerged is a concern for Kanewa and for all the world. Kanewa has been involved for many years in the support of Armenia. And today, with the developing news that we have heard, with hundreds already dead, wounded, missing, and those who have arrived and are arriving back in Armenia, we are very concerned for this humanitarian crisis. Last week, Pope Francis, at his general audience, also asked for the laying down of arms, the silencing of weapons in that particular region. We have assembled here true experts who are able to share with us what the situation is and how we might help. Finally, let me just ask you, as I do all the time, to identify three priorities that for Kanewa are most important. Number one, prayer. The power of prayer can never be minimized. And so I ask that you join us here and around the world in praying for this humanitarian crisis, that it resolve quickly, prayer. Two, to tell the story. We need to inform people. We need to tell the story. And three, we ask for your support. Whatever your means allow to please be able to send those to Kanewa so that we in turn are going to be able to support those people who are suffering. And so now let me turn and I will introduce each of our speakers, beginning with Michael La Savita. Michael La Savita is Kanewa's Director of Communications. Michael. Thank you, Monsignor, on this in this difficult time. Kanewa has been active helping Armenians. In fact, we were founded uh, as a result of the genocide of Armenians and Assyrian uh, Chaldeans in the early 20s, responding to their needs, providing assistance in terms of food and clothing, shelter, pastoral assistance. So our history with the Armenian people as an organization goes back now nearly a century. In modern times, of course, Armenia itself is, it, the state of Armenia is actually a rump state. It's just a shadow of its of itself. Armenians have, have lived throughout the Near East for centuries, um, in, in fact, for millennia, and occupied a much larger state. But in Armenia proper, which until 1991 was still part of the Soviet Union, we actually started with the great earthquake in December 1988, providing assistance in that great earthquake there, December 8th or 7th, uh, that struck Northern Armenia and worked closely with, with the Holy See in providing assistance there and ultimately building Redemptoris Mater Hospital, which continues to this day to provide much needed health care to, uh, to a marginalized population in a very remote region of Northern Armenia and Southern Georgia to largely an Armenian population. Since then, uh, our work has focused principally on working with helping Caritas and the Catholic Armenian Catholic Ordinariate with support of uh, villages, folks who uh, live in extreme conditions up in the north in the mountains, but also in areas like Artsakh and, and near Yerevan populations, people who are definitely uh, suffer from uh, a lack of, of of means, really quite poor people. Armenians are very well educated, 100% literacy, classical training, etc. But they are resource poor, and the economy is quite poor, quite poor. So what we do is, thanks to the generosity of our donors, is rush what aid we can we can support, provide to assist Caritas and the Ordinariate in their great collaboration in working with the marginalized, the elderly, pensioners, uh, single women and their families, as well as people with special needs. I'm thinking in particular of the great uh, uh, child care center in Gumri in the north. So our activities are, are modest, but they're quite focused and, and uh, with a long track record of great transparency and accountability coming to us both from the ordinariate and from Caritas. Thank you. 
Michael, thank you very much for that very important background. I turn now to His Excellency Archbishop Betancourt, who is currently the Papal Nuncio to Armenia and Georgia. Your Excellency, thank you very much for making this time with us in the midst of your very busy schedule. Could you please tell us a little bit about right now what's happening there on the ground in Armenia? Hello, and thank you. Thank you to all the Kanawa team for providing this occasion to talk about this very, very important humanitarian crisis that has been going on for a long time, too long. We're talking about 120,000 real people and tens of thousands of refugees. The BBC was talking about over 70,000 that have left the Nogoro Karabakh um, as of today with only the clothes on their back, with lack of medicine, food, water, hygiene, um, and energy and gas and electric have been cut off uh, periodically. It's, I mean, we don't understand why. There's a lack of all kinds of trust in all the promises. Sometimes the people feel that it's just a, a, a talk shop that doesn't deliver anything concrete in for this humanitarian crisis. It's a crisis that has been going on for over nine months with a blockade, and which is, it's a human caused crisis. It's not a natural catas catastrophe. It's a human caused crisis. And apart from the Red Cross, which periodically seems to be able to bring in some assistance, it's impossible for international aid agencies to reach the needy in the Gorda Karabakh. And so people are leaving in droves. From the Holy See's point of view, uh, Pope Francis has made um, urgent appeals. He was really the first head of state, the first religious leader back in 19, 19th of July in 2020 to make an appeal for dialogue and to, um, to resist any violence. And continuously uh, throughout the um, uh, appeals and the Sunday Angelus prayers and addresses to the diplomatic corps, ecumenical gatherings um, in meetings in the United Nations and bilateral and multilateral meetings, we have brought the case of Nagoro Karabakh to the fore. Uh, our appeal from the Holy See, um, a very urgent and very heartfelt appeal, was, is to silence the arms, to meet the humanitarian situation of these 120,000 real people, respect the human rights, a call to dialogue and transparency, respect international law, and we urge very actively the full involvement of the international community in this process. Of course, there are many that will look to the, the past and the history and point out to so many things that perhaps we're not, that we know we're not co correct, but the past we cannot change. History is what it is, but we can build the future and building a future which is based on respect and human rights and dignity is absolutely essential. Just recently, we had the Cardinal Secretary of State, Pietro Parolin, who is here on a humanitarian mission. He visited Azerbaijan between the 9th and the 11th of July and Armenia between the 11th and 13th of July. And the issues were humanitarian, the people that matter. And we looked at the uh, release of the prisoners of war and the peace process. We appeal urgently for the international community to get involved actively. And we appeal for a dialogue, for understanding, and that will facilitate this peace. We can ma not make people talk, but we can only try to provide the conditions for people to talk. But in the end, it's up to the parts to actually sit down and, part and, and, and talk and to be human towards their human beings. From our point of view, we continue to follow the situation in, uh, in uh, Yerevan and we are in touch with all the partners and the many the networks that we have from the government and the um, private institutions. And um, I believe that this heartfelt appeal and uh, our um, service for this human situation. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. At this time, it is a great joy to introduce a good friend of Canadian and Pontifical Mission, Patriarch Raphael Bedros Minassian. He is the 21st Patriarch of the Armenian Catholic Church and over the years has demonstrated and worked with Canewa on multiple projects. We are in awe of his heroic service, his, wise, his wisdom, and his passionate energy. So I take this moment to thank uh, his beatitude and to welcome his beatitude at the, to speak to us. Good morning, 
everybody and at the same time i thank you for this support for this uh, presentation of the situation that let me tell you that it's with deep sorrow i'm participating to your program because what i hear and what i see in the news and in the information everywhere i thank all the supporters and all the people that they're thinking about the armenians in this case of nagorno karabakh but unfortunately nagorno karabakh doesn't exist anymore i heard that the past is always part of the history and we we have to think about the future but we should not forget the present who are suffering all these people like a genocide and it is a genocide they are forced to leave their homeland they were forced to enter their houses and their homes and go away nobody stopped the aggressor but they are receiving the victims but unfortunately this is the situation meanwhile i was thinking to make a prayer and that prayer is for all the responsibles in this world who has a voice who has a power to change but they cannot change anything if not with the light of our lord in their heart in their mind to see the reality and put justice and peace that what i ask our savior jesus christ to illuminate the mind of these people and give them the challenge and the strength to take this responsibility and to speak and to give justice and bring peace in the in this world the war is the result of our disaccord or the absence of understanding each other so who has that power or that capability to talk let him open the mouth and talk about the justice and the peace that is the only thing that i can ask and ask everybody but always with the gratitude and thank you and especially for knewa that i know from the beginning today they are the angels of this support of this torture people the armenian people and i thank you from the bottom of my heart i would like now to take this opportunity uh to welcome and to invite thomas vorgese thomas vorgese is our director of programs here at kinewa and it is thomas to whom we go for a good understanding of where the particular projects where the particular programs are that kinewa for many years as michael had indicated earlier has been involved thomas Good morning all thank you monsignor for the left, permitting me this time as we've been hearing we've been working with armenia for a very long time almost a century right now and primarily we do work with supporting children at little prince center in artashat then students for with low income helping them in their education in gimri 
and also we have single mothers and children whom we support in helping them with their social status, social conditions. We are also supporting a lot of elderly, vulnerable people with food and the living situation. And when, when the winter comes in, it's terrible. And so we help them with during uh, over 700 beneficiaries with the winter uh, program providing warmth. And we also have home care for elderly in Atrashat region. And for over so many years, we've been working behind Karitas and the Armenian Ordinariate. And at this situation right now, as we've been hearing, when the Gorona Karabakh has been as, for last nine months in siege, and ethnically, it's Armenian villages and people there been kind of in siege and at the point of starvation, 120,000 and plus at the point of starvation and behind that now we see bombing and shell shelling. Uh, primarily, what do we do? What do we do to, to in this situation, all these people crossing over daily, the number of people crossing over is oh, crossing now right now, 60, 65,000. Three primary thing is food and medicine. We need to provide them with food and medicine. We need to provide a living place, a space, a shelter. And then as the winter is approaching, it's brutally cold over there. We need to provide them with clothes, blankets, space heaters. And that's what where we are looking for, how to uh, gather up funds to send across to people in Armenia. And we look towards to our donors. So I'm pleading and let's put our hearts and minds together and putting up together, helping out these people who are and flying our brothers in Armenia, brothers and sisters, to fulfill the commandment of the Lord, to help our neighbors, to love them as ourselves. So thank you all. Thank you for the time and look forward to her help. Thank you. Thomas, thank you very much uh, for your guidance and the involvement of Kinewa over the years. And you know so well uh, the programs that we are involved in and our commitment certainly remains firm. I'd like now to take this opportunity to introduce to you Deidre O'Brien. She is Kinewa's Director of Development. Deidre. Thank you, Monsignor. As you heard from my colleagues, there is a humanitarian crisis in our media. Today, we are asking you for your financial support to provide urgent assistance of food, medicine, and shelter. Our goal is to raise $100,000. Every gift makes a difference. If you would like to donate, I ask that you visit our website at cnewa.org. And thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you very much, Deidre. That's a great expression for us all to remember. Every gift makes a difference. So now let us turn and listen to Caritas Armenia. Uh, Kinewa works in many different ways, and among our strongest partners are the various Caritas groups. We're really very happy that we have the opportunity to work with them. I'd like to now introduce from Caritas Armenia, Anahit Givorgian, and please, Anahit, share with us the concerns and your awareness of this growing uh, and very critically important humanitarian crisis. Anahit. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Monsignor, for this uh, very honorable opportunity to speak uh, about the crisis that we are facing uh, now in Armenia. Uh, as you know, already for several days uh, after the crisis uh, escalation, people are fleeing their homeland, Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Maybe for many, this is the third time that they are leaving their homes, their country. And uh, unfortunately, as of today, we know that they are leaving it for good. Uh, here in Armenia, uh, Caritas is always uh, standing with vulnerable people, uh, meeting their needs. Also this time, uh, like before, during different crises, uh, after 2020, Armenian Caritas is on the ground to be helpful, to care for the people who suffered a lot. I thank you, uh, Kneva, uh, for being with Caritas Armenia for decades and uh, for helping us to meet the urgent need of vulnerable people. 
Uh, at the moment, uh, we, uh, according to the statistics, we received the information that more than 70,000 uh, people are already in Armenia in need of urgent support. Caritas Armenia is ready to provide these people with shelter, with livelihood support, with uh, urgent humanitarian support. And uh, I'm very thrilled here to represent not uh, only these vulnerable people, uh, but also our some of our team members, uh, the director and uh, our team members who are working in stressful situation uh, to be able to respond to this need. Uh, I should say that uh, we are weak uh, facing the crisis, but we are strong with all our partners all over the world, helping us to come out uh, from this disastrous situation uh, with dignity. Thank you. Anahi, I'd like to just express our gratitude to you and to your colleagues uh, for your presentation, for your reflection this morning. Uh, we can certainly appreciate this very difficult hour that you, Caritas Armenia, in solidarity with the Armenian people, are living through. Please know that you're not living through it alone. Kinewa is there with you. We want to accompany you during this moment. And so as I thank you and thank all of the guests who joined us here today at this special edition of Connections. I just invite those who are having the opportunity to, to view this and to be with us, recommending to you, number one, prayer, 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 and getting the story out. We need to tell the story. This is not something that can remain silent. And finally, we ask everyone within their means in these difficult times, but we ask everyone within their means to please donate. Uh, to donate to, to Kanewa so that Kanewa can further um, develop its own support uh, for the Armenian people who are going through this very severe humanitarian crisis, especially as winter comes now. And as my colleagues have emphasized the importance of trying to bring to the Armenian people food and medicine, shelter, space heaters, the kinds of things that they need as winter approaches. Thank you so very much for joining us.